here we are in the middle of nowhere. We had to walk about 500 meters on a dirt road. Then we met a peasant who invited us to, a shepherd who invited us to drink a beer. It's about 38 degrees Celsius, so very hot. We had to cross two gates to get here. And there you see the top of Nurage Piriku. We are in the area of Santulusurju in, well, I would say about central west Sardinia. Okay, the Nurage starts to appear. It's amongst the bushes and the trees. There's a pigsty here, which some people suspect make use of the Nurage, maybe in the bad season, in the winter time. There's a wall around the Nurage, so we're going to try to look for an entrance, which I don't really know where it's supposed to be. There's a window there. It's quite nice, well preserved, two stories. Okay, there's a way in here. So it's often like this in Sardinia. You just go in the middle of nowhere because you've seen that it must be a Nuraga somewhere. And then you get to it like this. Looks really nice, looks really well preserved. I'm going to walk on this wall for a little while, I'm getting closer to find the entrance, which should be well preserved. There appears to be no entrance here. Oh yes, maybe there's an entrance there. I can hardly see. Getting closer. Well, there's a small entrance there. But, yeah, quite a nice tower. Okay, I'm in our first wall enclosure. You see, the place is being used by people. There is something that looks like an entrance, but it's actually a niche. It's probably been dug. And we walk around the tower. more walls, but no entrance. So, as already reported by Della Marmora in the 1830s, when he visited Sardinia, you can read everything on my, well, actually watch everything on my documentary, Stone Riddles 2, Archaeological Treasures of Sardinia. This place is still being used as a pigsty. You see, a lot of walls have been just rededicated to a new purpose which is apparently a pigsty but I think I found the entrance now I have to go down a wall again this wall and I'll show you the entrance so as you can see the various walls and things around this Nuraga have been reused with gates everywhere I don't know when it's been used last time but there we go there is the entrance of this beautiful tower. I'm gonna go in now. Even the entrance has been closed by a gate, but it is now open. This is a huge entrance, really wide. Usually they're never that wide. An unbelievably big lintel. Okay. There we go. Something hanging from the wall. Place has been used, but the roof is preserved, perfectly preserved. There's a niche here, another niche here, big niches, a third niche here, and it's fresh, at least five or six degrees less than outside. And look at the lintel. It's amazing. It's really huge. I'd guess this one to be at least seven, eight tons. 
and the classical small window on top of it. There should be a passageway in here going up to the top. It's quite in bad shape, but I think we can manage to get up. But not with a camera, since parts have to be climbed. So I will go on top and show you from above. So the climb on top isn't really easy, but it's feasible. You can see Deborah emerging from the darkness. And here, and now I can do it. We got on top. The steps have collapsed, most of them. It's crumbling down, but there we go. Oi, what the falco? The falco. There's a beautiful. Wow. And there's the top. Beautiful. Niches. And here we have the way down where we were just a minute ago. And you see the pigsty all around us. There's probably more towers, but they have been either reutilized or completely covered by vegetation like that one. Okay, I just got on top. Now Deborah is climbing up. And here we have the room we just saw. And we can really go to the top of this tower. And this is the landscape around here. Again, 360 degrees. As you can see, stone blocks are huge. And there's tons and tons of them. Not just one, not just two. Hundreds or thousands of them. And they make up this nuraga, which I guess is at least 10 meters high. At least. That's the entrance where we came in before. We are again in the first floor room. And I just wanted to point out the niches that are really, really big. One and a half meters deep and maybe, yeah, almost two meters wide. Both of them, this one and that one as well, are quite big. And what is really particular here is this apparent doorway. But we are about five or six meters from, from the ground. So what's the purpose of a door here? And also there is the lintel and the little window on top of it which also is very particular i haven't seen that before on the first floor of a nurage so as i said in my documentary and i keep on saying every nurage is different from the others they may be similar sometimes but they're never exactly the same and that is begs the question why why would you change every time your plan why would you do these places and if you think that here it was probably closed it's certainly closed or at least most of it why make these small round rooms multi multi-story with no apparent purpose we're going back down again just to show you how steep this corridor is <coughs> The steps have completely gone, either collapsed or destroyed. Maybe they were easier to to take away because these nuragi have been often not really destroyed, but the stones have been taken away by people to to build their walls and and other stuff and houses and stuff like that. So. Of course. Uh. Okay, on the way down I could film it. Easier than on the way up. 